أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي ليس لأولية في ابتداء ولا لأزلية في انقطاع وانحصرت الأوصاف عن كنه معرفته وردعت عظمته العقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد الفتحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعنها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولو الله لصاحة الأرض بأهدها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من أخلص لله أربعين صباحا جرت ينابيع الحكمة من قلبه على لسانه فقال الإمام الباقر عليه الصلاة والسلام من لم يجعل الله له من نفسه واعظا فإن مواعظ الناس لن تغني عنه الشيء صلوات Tonight is the night which coincides with the day of Shahadat of our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salatu wa salam. And I would like to discuss tonight around the hadith which I recited from him, which is very much related to the series of lectures that we are having on the Thursday nights. And our discussion has already reached the place of uh, where we are supposed to talk about the muhasaba, the concept of muhasaba and muraqaba in Islam. And this hadith of our fifth Imam is also related uh, to somehow to our discussion. Where our Imam says that Man lam yaj'alillahu lahu min nafsihi wa'idhan Whomsoever Allah did not provide a wa'idh means an advisor Somebody who advises from the inside Any person who doesn't have a controlling force from inside which stops him from the harams, from the wrongs. From the inside there has to be an advisor, some power that stops you, your conscience that stops you from the inside. If you don't have that wa'idh from the inside, فَإِنَّ مَوَاعِذَ nas لَن تُغْنِيَ anhu shay'an. So the advices and ma'idha, nasihat of the people are not going to uh, suffice you for nothing. So basically, whatever we may learn from the outside is useless 
unless what uh, we say uh, there is a qabiliyat, there is a reception, there is a accommodating nature, there is a person who is ready to listen to the advices and pay attention to the advices from the inside. So the role of our own muhasaba and muraqaba comes in. We need to hold ourselves accountable and uh, we need to and we are the best ones for this job. Anybody from the outside is not eligible to hold us accountable in the best form as we can ourselves do that. Unless if somebody has those, you know, those spiritual mentors and high level scholars of uh, ma'rifat, ahlul ma'rifa wal irfan who can basically judge the people from uh, from the outside uh, except those few personalities no one else has the right to judge people from the outside and no one else can basically hold us accountable unless we ourselves hold ourselves accountable from the inside uh, we have uh, obviously uh, the hadith from our ninth imam uh, says the hadith from imam uh, uh, actually our tenth imam imam ali al naqi al hadi alayhi salatu wasalam says that laysa minna man lam yuhasib nafsahu fi kulli yawm someone who does not hold himself accountable daily is not amongst us فَإِنْ عَمِلَ حَسَنًا إِسْتَزَادَ اللَّهُ إِسْتَزَادَ اللَّهَ If he performed a good deed, he seeks from Allah to increase. That means uh, he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him the tawfiq to perform so that he can perform more of the same, more of the good deeds. وَإِنْ عَمِلَ سَيِّئًا And if he did a bad deed, after holding ourselves accountable, if we discovered that I did a, a, a wrong, Istaghfarullah um, minhu wa taaba ilayhi. He performs the istighfar, seeks the forgiveness, and performs the tawbah, means returning back to the straight path. So as soon as we discover we did the wrong, we return back and do seek the forgiveness. This is the benefit of muhasaba. When we do the muhasaba, uh, we always are guided towards the wrong that we have done. And we obviously, after getting guided about the wrong, we will seek istighfar so we don't repeat it. And also in another hadith from Amir Mumin alayhi salam, he says that man hasaba nafsahu rabiha, wa man ghafala anhu khasira. Whoever holds himself accountable uh, is the one who benefited. So in this life, life of dunya, where we are in a marketplace, a dunya sukun rabbiha fiha qawmun wa khasara fiha akharun. Dunya is a marketplace where some people are benefiting and some people are losing. It's a benefit and loss taking place on a daily basis. Some humans are losing and some people are benefiting. In such a marketplace, now the key to getting successful and uh, to gain out of this uh, you know this world which is a marketplace to gain to make a gain to make benefit to make advances uh, is that we do the muhasaba woman ghafala anhu khasira whoever ignores it is a loser will lose woman khafa amina these are very small statements but these are wisdoms that Imam Ali is imparting and informing people. So whoever got afraid became secured. So if we are afraid from Allah, that's how we will secure ourselves. Everybody loves to get security. Security and peace is something every human loves to get. So the key to getting secure is to, af to be afraid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has said in another hadith that لا تخف إلا ذنبك don't be afraid of anything except your own sin. So this is, uh, we are supposed to be afraid of our sins only. Uh, except the sin, except your sin. 
وَمَنْ اِعْتَبَرَ أَبْسَرَ Whoever takes the ibrat, takes the lesson, will end up having the, uh, you know, the basirat. Having the basirat, he will end up having the right vision, correct vision. That's if so. Every, and everything around us, this is not part of hadith, I'm explaining to you. Everything around us is an ibrat and lesson. Everything which is around us. We need to learn lessons from all those things and this is the sha'an of a person having ma'rifat that whenever uh, the awliya Allah, the beloved servants of Allah, whenever they look around, uh, around themselves, they take lessons. So, nazaruhum ibratun. Isn't that right? The Prophet has said, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when um, the Holy Prophet uh, was uh, um, was um, uh, describing the 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 duty of a mu'min, and uh, after he described the duties of the mu'min, somebody said to the Prophet, "Ahaulai awliya Allah, are these the beloved servants of Allah?" I mean, this, this is the description of the awliya. Prophet said, no, awliya Allah are basically... Then the Prophet started to describe the awliya. So what he was describing earlier was the duty of regular moments. And then Prophet said that in awliya Allah sakatu kana sukutuhum fikran. If awliya Allah are, uh, you know, if they are silent, their silence is fikr, tafakkur. Thinking about the affairs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa takallamu fakana kalamuhum dhikran. And if the beloved servants of Allah they speak, their talk is zikr and remembrance of Allah. And wa nataku fakana nutkuhum hikmatan. When they would talk, they would speak, their, their talk is hikmat and wisdom. Wa nazaru, when they look, that means whenever they look around the things, their looking is ibrat. Everywhere they look around, they're taking lessons out of it. When they walk, their walking is barakat among the people. So, this, this is how the only beloved servants of Allah are. And then the Prophet says, if the fixed time of death was not there, their souls would not have uh, uh, remained in their bodies. Uh, so this is how the awliya are. So we are talking about uh, that everything around us is an ibrat, and ibrat in ilmul akhlaq is defined that when you look at something wrong, you get transferred, an intiqal, getting transferred from the bad sifat towards the good sifat and attribute. If I see something wrong and mistake and sin taking place, I don't get transferred I know from the, the bad sifat to the good sifat that I have in myself. I saw somebody else doing wrong and I have a bad sifat in my own self. I don't get transferred from the bad towards the good. If I don't get transferred, this is not called a breath. Ibrat and i'tibar in Arabic means you are getting trans, you are transferring yourself from the bad towards the good after looking towards the bad. So everything is an ibrat. Woman absara fahima, and whoever has the basirat, he will end up understanding. So why we don't understand? Because we don't have basirat. Why we don't have basirat in the matters of the religion? Because we don't take the lessons from the wrongs. You know. Woman uh, Fahima Alima. And whoever understands, he will end up knowing it. Look at the beautiful sequence that Imam Ali has teaching us. So, Ya um, Abadar. And look, and now let's see the nasihat that Prophet did towards Abu Dhar. This is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where Prophet said, Ya Abadar. 
that means hold yourself accountable because before you are held accountable we are all held accountable in the grave obviously and in the day of judgment so before we are held accountable in those places we hold ourselves accountable for innahu ahwanu li hisabika ghadan because this is easier for your accountability tomorrow wa zin nafsaka qabla an tuzana and weigh yourself before before you are weighed our souls will be weighed isn't it right how much nur the soul is carrying nur of the aqeedah of haq and nur of the uh, of the amal and practice of haq and nur of the akhlaq and sifatun hamida the beautiful spiritual attributes of haq so this is the value of the soul this much nur is the value of the soul so, so souls will be weighed wa qabla before you are weighed we need to weigh ourselves wa tajahhaz lil ard al akbar يَوْمَ لَا يَخْفَ عَلَى اللَّهِ خَافِيَةً and get ready for the big exhibition or big display so big display is the day of judgment you know where we are all present in the huzur and mahdar in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when nothing is going to be hidden upon him يَا أَبَا ذَرْ well nothing is hidden on Allah even today but we are some people some humans are not realizing the fact that nothing is hidden from Allah we will the humans will end up realizing that nothing was hidden on allah otherwise nothing is hidden even today ya abadhar la yakunu rajulu min almuttaqin hatta yuhasibu nafsahu ashadda min min muhasabati sharike sharikahu a mu'min cannot be a mu'min uh, among the muttaqin among the pious until he holds himself accountable more severe than the accountability of a partner towards the partner his partner you see the business partners when they are serious about the business they hold each other accountable so basically things are done right and the books and the finances are in shape so that's how they you know the partners do fa ya'lamu min ayna mat'amuhu ayna min ayna mat'amuhu so mu'min will discover where is his food from what kind of food are am i consuming wa min ayna mashrabuhu and where is my drink wa min ayna malbasuhu and what is where from where is my are my clothes so all that money that i'm using for food and drink and cloth clothings this has to go under check i mean halal in aw haram is it from halal or from haram that's the biggest question that we will ask ya abaza من لم يبال من أين اكتسب المال لم يبال الله من أين أدخله النار أو أبو ذر هو ما doesn't care about where he makes the money from you know Allah would not care from where he is gonna throw him into the hell isn't it right so money uh, and and uh, accountability is that important in another hadith uh, i remember i read the prophet has said that a mu'min we learn in the light of the hadith that a mu'min considers the sin he has performed as a stone about to fall on on him just imagine you are standing somewhere under the mountain and there are falling rocks in 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 different highways if you were travel on the mountains they put the sign boards you know the falling rocks so be careful is it right so when we are crossing through those passages we are very careful maybe there are certain falling rocks and we will end up you know damaging ourselves or our cars so prophet had in the light of the hadith we learned he said a mu'min considers the sin he performed as a falling rock about to fall on his head so just imagine how careful you would be and all you would focus is that and you will make sure you get rid of that sin is it right because unless you are secured from the falling rock you will never uh, you know take a moment of peace in your life until you first make sure that the that the rock is not going to uh, hit your head whereas a kafir considers the sin he done he did as a fly sitting on him and is just the fly goes away so this is how the shaitan plays this is how actually uh shaitan has triple policies for for the human being 
after after deceiving after the waswasa three policies after the waswasa first of all obviously he deceives constantly constantly never stops because he is a sworn enemy fa bi izzatika la ughwiyannahum ajma'in i swear to your izzat and dignity i'm going to mislead all of them illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin except your mukhlas servants they are exempt this is the ayat of quran this is true when allah is documenting something it has to be true so only mukhlas people are saved from the deceptions of shaitan and his ighwa and misleading so now shaitan after misleading what he does he has triple policies tasweel and tazyeen and tasweef tasweel means he tries his best to make excuses coming in your mind no no it's okay you know that's okay try to justify excuses and the and tazyeen means he beautifies the sin so he's deceiving you he's provoking the wrong idea in your mind so that you can go for a wrong and then obviously we have cautions from inside that doesn't allow us to do that but then there has to be some or the the obstacle of conscience has to be removed through either the swil furnishing excuses to justify it b tazyeen beautifying and decorating the wrong in front of your eyes no it is not that wrong there are a whole bunch of people who are doing that isn't it right tazyeen and then is tasweef right okay when a person uh uh realizes he is doing wrong or he has done wrong he shaitan uh brings the in the idea in the mind that it's okay you can do the tawbah later on you know and ignore the tawbah so he continues to be in the zulmat of the sin remember the sin burns our soul straight away and then right we already discussed it in one of the previous lectures i told uh, i discussed that jannat and nar are concepts which exist right now and we get burnt straight away so when we get burnt straight get burnt straight away the soul is already burnt by the sin now that we would we must come out of the hell fire of the flame of the fire back to the straight path and that means come back to the paradise is that right coming back to the paradise requires uh first of all realizing that i did wrong second of all after realizing i repent nadamat in the qalb so this is going to happen when you do the muhasaba and that's what we are discussing when we do the muhasaba this is a slap on the face of shaitan because we end up realizing what wrong i have done when i realize then i will move forward to repair and fix it if i don't realize it i will never move forward to repair and fix it especially when human being is already declared to be in a loss by the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says bismillah arrahman arrahim wal asr innal insana lafi so all the human beings are in loss it's a it's a clear verdict from allah all the human beings are in loss الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر these four people who do these four things are exempt and all the rest are in they are failure they are in loss kusran so ان العاقل من نظر في يومه لغده عاقل intellectual is the person who Um, uh see the word aqil in arabic is derived from aqala which means tying up in old days they used to tie up the camel is that right and the the rope for tying up the camel was called aqal in arabic in those days so because they used to tie up the camel when the tam camel is tied up it cannot move around beyond that limits beyond the limits of the rope the radius of the rope that's the limits so it ties up the camel aql is called aql because it ties up the hawa the 
our desires, our wishes. Whatever I wish to do in my own because I like it. Whatever I can think I like and I want to do that on my own, away from the hukum of the sharia, this is what the aql is. So aql is something that, uh, that asks you to go by the sharia, by the hukum of the creator, not what you like to do. This is why it is called aql. And also the word hijr, we say in Arabic, you know, um, um, uh, those people who hijr is also similarly uh, derived from the Arabic word of hajara. Hajara means mana'a. So aql is called, you know, um, ashabul hijr, people who have aql, means people who are uh, stopping themselves from the wrongs and the harams. So that's what uh, aql is called, the aql. Aqil Aqil is the person who looks on his day uh, towards his tomorrow. That means today I am careful about tomorrow. Wasa'a fi fakaki nafsihi and he works hard, he does his effort to release himself, release his soul. So when I realize that my soul is under the captivity of the shaitanic deceptions and the sins then I need to release my soul and set it free away from my desires in the freedom of Allah's obedience. وَعَمِلَ لَهَا لَا بُدَّ لَهُ وَلَا مَحِيسَ عَنْهُ عَمِلَ لِمَا لَا بُدَّ لَهُ وَلَا مَحِيسَ عَنْهُ And uh, Aqil is the person who works for what is compulsory and what there is no escape from. <laughs> there is no escape from the Day of Judgment, isn't it right? So we need to work for the Akhirat, not for the sake of dunya. So we find that this is about the muhasaba uh, uh, because the time of death is unknown according to the hikmat of Allah he did not inform us the time of death and because the time of death is unknown every day and night which is passing by is making us closer towards the uh, great show being in the mahdar and presence of Allah Al-Laylu idha aqbala nada munadin bisawtin yasma'uhu al-khala'iq When the night comes the announcer announces in a voice that all the creatures hear illa saqalain except the humans and the jinns Imam Sadiq says, when the night comes, uh, an, an, an announcer announces with a voice that is heard by all the creatures except the humans and the jinns. And this announcer says, Yabna Adam inni khalkun jadeed, inni alama fiya shaheed. I am a new creature and I am a witness over, uh, you know, in other words, what is happening inside me. That means whatever in the night we perform, the night itself is a witness. Fakhuz minni, so take benefit from me, in other words. Fa inni law talaat al shamsu lam arja ila dunya, walam tuzawid fiya min hasanatin, walam tasta'atib fiya min sayyatin. Because once I pass by, once the, the, the sun rises, I'm not going to return back to, this, to the dunya. And you cannot increase in any hasana, in any good deed inside me. And you cannot be repenting over the wrong that you did inside me. In other words. وَكَذَلِكَ يَقُولُ النَّهَارِ إِذَا أَدْبَرَ اللَّيْلِ And similarly the date says when the night passes by. So day and night themselves are speaking to the humans. Remember when Prophet was addressing the shuhada of Uhud. Prophet standing and talking to the dead to those who died in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are actually alive, not really dead. So, and one of the ashab said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that At-Tusma'u al-Mawta At-Tusma'u al-Mawta Are you, uh, you know, making the dead people hear your voice? Tell me, are you talking to the dead? And Prophet said in the hum, Asma' minkum they hear more than you. Right? There's so many voices around that the Munadi from Ghaib is speaking. So many things are being said. 
But we are in the examination hall. We humans and jinns, we don't hear those voices. So we don't hear the voices and, and there are so many, not so many, all the creatures here. Every creature out there is hearing to those voices other than us, the humans and the jinns who are in the, uh, in the, in the test. So the shaitan delays the muhasaba and displays it as a difficult job and in some cases an impossible job although it is not impossible although our scholars say in the beginning it may be a little bit difficult but gradually it becomes easy and every day doing the muhasaba will make us get rid of those uh, wrongs in our life gradually or for some people immediately depending on the taharat of the qalb of every person is different Ayatullah al-Uzma Sayyid Qadhi Tabatabai Rahmatullahi Alayhi when he used to go for purchasing the vegetables or fruit, whatever he used to buy the in the Islamic marketplace, in the Muslim marketplace, in the Muslim bazaar, he used to buy those of the fruits which are you know, little bit damaged which nobody else buys. And he used to say, because why are we inflicting, why we are not, why can we ignore those, you know, if we ignore those fruits, this Muslim person who is selling it, you know, at the end of the day, he will only have the damaged fruits with him, which nobody wants to buy. So this is how, uh, to that, you know, detail of our scholars who have reached certain uh, levels, uh, they, every minute detail of their behavior you know you find you are serving food and if there's a little bit a bread which is little bit burnt some people just ignore that bread and take the nice one and the fresh one which is not burnt now somebody has to end up taking that bread as well isn't that right if I do this little sacrifice and I take the burnt bread which is little bit burnt and the rest of the people since take the nicer bread, it's not going to harm me, it's a little thing. But it has a big spiritual impact. And one of the biggest impacts is taming the desires of the soul. This itself is a hadaf in Islam. That, you know, uh, 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 that we always do what ag against what the nafs likes. Anything what your nafs likes, if you always oppose it, you will be a Sa'id and Sa'adatman person in your life. Because anything that the nafs asks us to do has to be patil. It can never be haq. Because Quran has already said, Inna nafsa la ammaratum bisu illa ma rahima rabbi. So nafs is something that not just commands, it commands a lot towards the wrong and evil. A marathon is a, is a you know, it, it, it shows us, it, is, it, it commands us so much uh, towards the su and the evil and the wrong. So when a, a person holds himself accountable, what happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts protecting him. That's the result. Let's go to the hadith of Amir Mumni alayhi salam where he says that man kana lahu min nafsihi zajir kana alayhi min allahi hafiz. Whoever has uh, 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 from his own nafs uh, you know, something that stops him, then Allah has a protector for him. So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects, protect, provides protector for him. And the next stage after muhasaba is muraqaba. Muraqaba means keeping a watch. That means now I held myself accountable on daily basis and either immediately or gradually I get rid of the sins from my life. Now I get rid of sins, I do the tawbah, and now I am free from the sins and free from the captivity of shaitanic deceptions and my desires. 
and I come back to aql, I come back to the senses, and I stop doing the wrongs in the life. Now the next stage is muraqaba, that I'm watchful over myself, so I don't return back to the similar previous level stage which I already crossed. Muraqaba requires awakeness, that we are awake, we are not ghafil, we get out of the stage of ghaflat, we are, uh, we believe that Allah, we are in the huzoor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is watching us and uh, we end up doing uh, tafakkur based actions. This is the description of muraqaba. Muraqaba means a person is watchful over his behavior, is awake, not ghafil, sees himself in the mahdar of Allah and also every action that now he would take in his life is based on tafakkur. So he will think before he does anything. If somebody has this level of spirituality, he is muraqib, he is watchful over himself and obviously he will be protected. إِنَّ الْحَازِمْ مَنْ شَغَلَ نَفْسَهُ بِجِهَادِ نَفْسِهِ فَأَصْلَحَهَا وَحَبَسَهَا عَنْ أَهْوِيَتِهَا وَلَزَّاتِهَا فَمَلَكَهَا وَإِنَّ الْعَقِلِ بِنَفْسِهِ عَنِ الدُّنْيَا So basically uh, a person who is careful is the one who engages himself through the jihad of his nafs so he ends up doing the islah and correction and uh, he controls himself from the ahwiya which means the desires and the lazat and pleasures so that he starts owning his own self a person who is muraqib owns his own self he controls he is now in control so his himself was not driven now no longer driven by shaitan he takes the charge of his life back into his hands controlling himself according to allah's hukum so basically allah is controlling him in the real sense um, and if we think that we can our our nafs can control our desires can control this is basically shaitan is controlling a person nafs min shaitan. there are some some people who are overly confident about themselves there are some parents who are overly confident about their daughters and sons you talk to some fathers and mothers and they, no, 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 my son can never do that. Uh, Maulana, I know my son better than anybody else. He can never do that. Overly confident about their own children. Because we consider our children to be ours. Anything wrong that my son does, it will, the nisbat goes to me. So I don't want to take the heat on my own. So some people are not even ready to consider the rule out. They rule out the possibility that the children ha may have done the wrong. So this is the over overly confident behavior towards our own nafs. This is not right. You know, we should always be open to uh, accountability. Relying on your nafs is the most, the strongest of the, uh, you know, chances of shaitan um, um, we find that um, um, I would like to mention one hadith from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam Because this night belongs to him and uh, uh, obviously uh, this Imam of ours is the one who is Baqir uh, Ulum al Nabiyyin. He's the one who uh, dissected the knowledge of the prophets, expanded and propagated, and the religion was protected and spread out because of the services of our Imam salam. and this laqab of Al-Baqir had been given mm, to the Imam by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the teachings 
of the prophets that Imam had spread um, has been uh, so unique. Some of the greatest personalities of the history we find were um, under his tarbiyat, his ashab, his companions are some of the greatest of the all-time greatest companions, including Muhammad ibn Muslim and Zurara and uh, um, Jabir ibn Yazid al Jufi and Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman. So these are some of the examples how our Imams had been doing the tarbiyat of the Shia and the Mu'mineen and raised them towards that elevation. Muhammad ibn Muslim alone narrated 30,000 hadiths from Imam al Bakr. And he says that it's not okay for me to tell these narrations to just anybody. So one uh, student of the Imam has been eligible to 30,000 hadiths is, is a huge knowledge. Prophet has already said in his Mu'tabar, authentic hadith, Man hafadha min ummati arba'ina hadithan mimma yahtajuna ilayhi fi amri deenihim wa dunyahum ba'asahu Allahu yawm al-qiyamati faqihan aliman. Anyone from my ummah who can memorize 440 hadith about things which people stand in need of the in the affairs of their dunya and akhirat. Mimma yahtajuna ilayhi fi amri deenihim wa dunyahum fi in the affairs of deen and dunya. Ba'asahu Allahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect him as a faqih and alim. So for us to become a faqih and alim, 40 hadith is enough. Isn't that right? 4-0. And now we find Muhammad ibn Muslim alone has learned 30,000 hadith from Imam al Bakr. So we are talking about an Imam who has doing these services that his students are becoming one of the greatest personalities of the history uh, of, uh, of the glorious history of our religion. And uh, obviously, uh, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam has said that إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَ جَابِرًا لِأَنَّهُ جَبَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِعِلْمِهِ وَهُوَ بَحْرٌ لَا يُنزَحْ وَهُوَ الْبَابِ Jabir is, was called Jabir because he compensated the mu'mineen for the knowledge. So Jabir is a, we learn in the light of the hadith, he is like an ocean where nothing decreases from that ocean. Such a knowledge. Um, um, and he was he is in hujjat of Allah on all the creatures hujjatu ala al-khalq min hujjat Allah ya Abi Ja'far Muhammad ibn Ali alayhim as-salam from Imam al-Baqir alayhim salatu salam so these are uh, these are hadith that we learn and I will uh, mention this one hadith uh, from the Imam these hadith are obviously uh, through the companions who worked hard to protect uh, the teachings. And not just uh, our own, uh, from people from our religion, but so many scholars from uh, the Sunni community were also great scholars of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of their community are also uh, like Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i and, uh, you know, uh, Amin al-Mubarak and Kisan and Zuhari and Awza'i these people are you know are recognized personalities of the Sunni community are all students of Imam al-Baqir uh, and they have learned from his teachings so in this hadith Imam salam says Nahnu Jambullah wa Nahnu Habdullah wa Nahnu Rahmatullah ala khalqay so, uh, jump means the sight of Allah. And we are the rope of Allah. And we are the mercy of Allah on His creatures. Bina yaftahullah wa bina yaktimullah. Allah starts through us and Allah ends through us. So, the, every ni'mat of Allah comes to the Imam and the first one to receive is him and um, obviously the universe started with them they are the first creatures the last human to survive is them one of them is the last, humans to, last human to survive 
because nothing in the universe can sustain and survive without the imam and hujjat uh, present in the creatures so that we protect so that allah protects his creatures not becoming abas without a purpose the purpose is the imam who fulfills the serves the purpose completely wa nahnu nahnu a'immatu a'immatul huda wa masabihu duja we are the imams of guidance and the torches in the darkness so um, uh, and wa nahnu alam la ahli dunya we are the flag for the people of dunya wa nahnu sabiqun wa nahnu akhirun and we are the leaders the ones who have taken the lead on everyone else and we are the ones who are at the end wa nahnu akhirun and uh, man uh, and uh, imam alayhi salam says man tamassaka bina lahiqa wa man takhallafa anna ghariqa whoever gets uh, you know uh, in touch grabs us uh, holds on to us will join us and whoever turns away from us gets drowned nahnu qadatul muhajjirin we are the leaders of all those people who will have noor coming out of their faces on the day of judgment those people are called muhajjirin the followers of amir mumin alayhi salam imam, imam says nahnu qadatul muhajjirin we are the leaders of the muhajjirin wa nahnu haramullah and we are the divine sanctity and domain of allah wa nahnu tariq we are the path there is no other path other than them their imamat and wadayat and sticking to what they said wa was siratul mustaqim that we we are the straight path that we obeying the walayat of the imam of your time this is the siratul mustaqim ila allah as siratul mustaqim ila allah azza wa jal wa nahnu min ni'amillah ala khalqih we are among the nikmats of allah on his creatures wa nahnu al minhaj we are the the minhaj in the path wa nahnu ma'din uh, an-nubuwa uh, we are the mineral of the prophethood well, uh, and as uh, a uh, mineral of the prophethood mawdu al-risala and the place of the risalat uh, the message message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nahnu usul din and we are the roots of the religion so wa ilayna yakhtalifu al-malaika and to us the angels descend angels are coming upon us wa nahnu siraj we are the torch laman istada abina for whomsoever wishes to get enlightened so if anybody wants the nur we need to turn to the torch and wa nahnu sabil and we are the path laman iqtada bina for the one who is following us wa nahnu al-hudatu ila al-janna and we are the guides towards the paradise wa nahnu urwatu al-islam and we are the rope of islam wa nahnu al-jusur wa nahnu al-qanatir and we are the bridges man mada alayna asbaqa whoever walks on that means whoever comes along with us he takes a lead wa man takhallafa anha anna mahqa whoever turns away from us got erased or destroyed nahnu sanamul a'zam wa bina yasrifu allah ankum al azab and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the azab from you through us man absara bina wa arifana wa arifa haqqana wa akhadha bi amrina fa huwa minna whoever takes the basirat through us that means he looks around with the vision of ahlul bayt we take the world view and vision we we learn it from them and then we see things through their vision and wa arifa arifana and has our ma'rifat wa arifa haqqana and has the ma'rifat of our haq haq is the haqul walaya that they have wa akhadha bi amrina and he whoever takes that means he obeys our command akhadha bi amra means taking our command obeying the command fa huwa minna he is considered to be he is one of us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
bless all of us to understand and to practice the ma'arif of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wassalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ya Allah, 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 Allahum Mansur al Islam wal Muslimin, Wahdul al Kufara wal Munafiqin, Allahum Mansur man Nasr al Din, Wahdul man Khadal al Muslimin, Allahum Mansur Wahfad wa Ayyid Ulama and al Rabbaniyin, O Marajan al Rabbaniyin, Nasim al Wali al Faqi, Qaid al Muslimin, اللهم منصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فك عن الأسراء المسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأشياعه وأتباعه وأعوانه بجاه محمد وآله الطاهرين If you have any, 